Hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to make a vault, so like a safe, open its door and then reveal something inside. It could be a video, a graphic, a logo, whatever you want it to be. So let's get to it. In After Effects, I'm going to import a graphic of a vault that I already created in Illustrator. Now, you don't have to create your own. I'm going to put the link to this asset in the description of this video so that you can use the same file that I'm using here. But you can also create your own, really easy. All right, I'm gonna go in After Effects and I'm going to save this project as uh, the vault. And now I'm going to import the asset. This is a multi-layered Illustrator file, so I'm going to import it as a composition layer size. Click OK. And now I'm going to double click the composition to open it up in the timeline. And you see that we have four layers in here. I'm going to change the size of the composition. So composition, composition settings, and I'm going to make this, uh, I'll make it 4K, 2997. So this one here, 3840 by 2160 is good enough. And there you have it. Alrighty, so now I'm going to see which layers it is that I have. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. So I have the combination handle here. You can see that it is this uh, um, circle here with the lines. That's what's actually going to turn like you're putting in the combination of the vault, of the safe. Then we have the vault door, okay. Then we have the hinge right here, I like that. And then of course the body. And right now we're gonna do this in 3D, but I'm going to change the anchor point of the door. So I'm going to select the vault door and I'm going to now select the pan behind or the anchor point tool, and I'm going to move it here to the left. There you go. Now I'm going to change these to 3D. Select the layers and then make them 3D like yay. I'm going to change this to classic 3D because it doesn't need to be cinema 4D. And there you go. So all I have to do now is I need to turn the handle of the combination handle and then I have to stop it and then the vault door will open to reveal whatever it is that is inside of the vault. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, to rotate this animation handle, I'm going to put an expression on the Z rotation. So Alt, click on the stopwatch of the Z rotation, and now I'm just going to type wiggle, open and close parentheses, and now maybe one times per second and 180 degrees. So 1, 180, and now I click outside of that. Let me just see what this is doing. And this is not bad, but I do want for this whole thing to stop at some point. So I'm going to add a null object. So layer, new, null object, and I'm just going to call this expression control. All right, or controls, let's do it in plural. Now to this layer, I'm going to add an effect. So I'm gonna go under Effect, Expression Controls, and I'm going to add a slider control. I'm going to select this number, the 180, and if you double click on it, that's enough to select the number. And now I'm going to pick whip to the slider of the expression control, and the expression gets written for me. So this is what I'm doing. When you have a wiggle expression, the two numbers inside of the parentheses signify frequency and magnitude. So frequency first, how often do you want for the numbers to change? And since I wrote a one, I want one times per second. The next number is how much. And right now we are in rotation. So it's how many degrees do you want for this value to change? And I'm connecting that to this value 
which right now is zero. So what I am doing is I am telling the expression to change every one second, but to change nothing. So right now this is doing nothing, but I am going to keyframe the slider control. So this is how it's gonna work. It's going to just start without changing anything and at around one and a half seconds or thereabouts, I am going to keyframe the slider until about maybe three and a half seconds, something like that, to go 180. So it's going to start, I'm just gonna play it with nothing, then it's gonna start turning, and at around seven or eight seconds, something like that, I just press the letter U, I'm going to add another keyframe, and then another keyframe about a second and a half later, where this is just going to stop to zero. So this is what I'm doing. It's starting without any wiggling, then it's gonna start wiggling 180 degrees every one second, and then we'll slowly stop. Once it stops, this is where the door will open. I need for both the door and the handle to open together. So I am going to parent the handle to the door. How we do parent is that we talk to the children layer. So I'm going to talk to the combination handle layer and I'm going to say, hey, your parent is the vault door. And now when the vault door rotates, the combination handle will come with it. So R for rotation, I'm going to do it on the Y rotation because that's the Y axis. And I'm gonna go about a second or so and now I'm going to rotate it like yay. And you can see that the combination handle went with it. So this is what we have so far. We have this, it's doing its thing. Da, 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 da. The combination is being written in. And you're in charge of this timing. Right now this might be a little too long, but that's okay. And then when it finishes, boom, the door opens and we're good. So that is what we have so far. At this point, I want to animate the whole thing. I want to animate everything so that it can just move however we want it to move so that maybe while the combination handle is happening, it's also animating, you know, something a little bit more um. So I'm going to select all of these guys, all of the layers, and I'm going to pre-compose them. So layer, pre-compose, and I'm just gonna call this vault, vault layers, all right? I'm gonna make this 3D, and let's see how it's working perfectly well. I love it. All right, now I am going to animate this. So I can press S for scale, P for position, and R for rotation, and I can animate all of it. So I'm just gonna keyframe all of them now. And now I'm gonna use this widget here just to change it a tad. There you go, and maybe animate it like yay. All right, so it's gonna do its thing, it's moving, blah, 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 and it's gonna open somewhere around here. So when it opens, I want for this, so I'm going to go ahead and reset everything to be a little bit closer to the camera, a little bit larger. And this is what we have. So the combination is happening, the vault is coming, we can make this faster again if we need to. I don't think it's necessary because we can add things like uh, music and all of that. So I think this second keyframe is taking a little too long. Let me see. Yes, because I need it to land before it gets like this. So I want you to notice that it's looking a little soft. You know, it's like it's not looking like super sharp, right? So that could be because if we go to the original one, you see this little sunshine, the continuously rasterized, I didn't check that. 
right? But I also didn't check it here. So now that this is checked, do you see the difference how much sharper this looks? This is looking really good. Fantastic. So once this opens up, so once it starts showing, let me go ahead and show the transparency grid here. So there, the video, the logo, the whatever you need to have needs to be already under it. So let me go ahead and import a video. You can use any video you want. It doesn't really matter. Just going to put it under the other layer and I'm going to start it here. As I drag it, I'm going to press and hold the shift key and that makes it snap to where the playhead is. All right, so now that I this video starts there, I can literally mask it. I'm going to mask it right here. About yay. So that this is what shows. I want for the vault to just come towards the camera and I can do that either with scale or I can do it with position because this is 3D. So if I make it closer to the camera, it's gonna look bigger. And as it comes larger and larger, it's gonna reveal more and more of these uh, uh, faults, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. So this is what's happening, the animation, and right around here, I am going to keyframe position to about uh, maybe here. And I'm going to make it so large that basically it just disappears like yay. All right? So at this point in time, I need to keyframe the mask of the video because at this point, I want for the video to fill up the entire screen. So we're going to do that by selecting the video and pressing M for mask. And see how this keyframe is showing? Means that if I press the letter J on my key keyboard, my playhead is gonna go there. So in here, I can now keyframe the mask. I can now press the letter K. And now I can modify the mask so that it, it's just as big as the entire screen. All right, so I'm going to maybe make it a little bit smaller so that the interpolation makes a little bit more sense. Now I'm gonna go backwards a little bit and maybe the mask is a little bit too large here. I'm just going to change it a tiny little bit. And now here, I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. And the shortcut that I'm using, just so that you know, is Control or Command if you're on the Mac, T for transform, as in the free transform tool in Photoshop. Here we go. This is, actually, this is good. And I'm gonna go to this side. This is good. Here, here is not good. So control or command T, I'm gonna make this taller. Keep on going. And that's pretty good. I think that did it. We have it, and the animation works beautifully. So as you can see, this whole vault animation is not too difficult when it is 2D. And it is 2D because there's no depth to the vault. I would like to do the animation again, but extruding the vault so that it actually looks like a vault. And for that, we're gonna need to use the Cinema 4D renderer. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to import the file again. So composition, layer size, and now I have vault two. Same thing as before, so composition, composition settings, I'm gonna make it 4K. And there you go. Now, if I make these layers 3D and I change the renderer to classic, uh, I'm sorry, to cinema 4D, 
I should be able to extrude these guys. The problem is that in After Effects, you can't extrude Illustrator files, but you can extrude shape layers. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn these guys, so select them all, right click, create shapes from vector layer. And now I'll be able to extrude these. So now that I have these as shape layers, I can delete the Illustrator files and now I'll be fine. I can now select these guys and I'm going to go to Geometry Options and I'm going to make a slight extrusion depth to all of them. I don't know, maybe 30 pixels or so. But the vault body, I want to do that quite a bit more. So maybe a 90 or so. And right now I can't see a lot of what's going on because all of the gradients that I had created in Illustrator are gone, but that's okay because I like it in gray. I could just change the color if I want to, but that's okay. All the gradients are going to be produced by the light. So I'm going to add a light, layer, new, light, and I think I'm going to make it white and let's make it spot. I think that's good. And actually, I think that's a little bit too bright. So let's reduce this. There you go. And now I'm going to select all of these, press P for position, and I'm going to bring them closer to the camera. All right. So let's see. The combination handles, there they go. I'm going to change that view to a custom view. Ah, there you go. And yeah, combination handles is a little too much. I'm going to undo that. There you go. So I'm going to bring the vault door, the combination handle, there you go. And I think I need to extrude the vault body a little bit more. That's looking a heck of a lot better. All right, so about the only thing that I have in here is the combination handle didn't quite come properly. So I have these groups. Let me undo, there you go. I'm going to undo that so that I can actually see that key when it turns and all of that. So that's pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with that. So if I want to see more views, I can grab this tool, which is the orbit around cursor tool. And now I can simply click and drag and I can look at all these parts. And that's actually looking pretty good. I mean, that does look kind of sort of like a vault. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the next thing that I want to do, and I'm going to start with the vault body. Uh, I'm going to go to material options and I'm going to change some of the material uh, properties here. So I'm going to change things like uh, the metal characteristic, the specular shininess. I really like that a little bit more. So the intensity. Maybe that's too much. So maybe somewhere around here. Diffuse. About yay. And the reflection roll off as well. Going to change the reflection sharpness. And of course, now I'll change the intensity. And I'm not necessarily have anything that I'm going to have reflecting in here, but just in case. So I really like how all of that looks. So I'm going to select all of these and copy. And I'm going to select my other layers and I'm just going to paste. And now all of them should have kind of sort of the same intensity. So now I'm going to add a light, an ambient light, only because I want for the sides to be illuminated a little bit more. And I'm going to change that intensity a tiny. And I think I'm digging that. All right, so I could change the position of this light. And there you go. I'm actually liking this quite a bit. 
just like that. Alrighty, I'm going to go back to my active camera view. I really like this. And now what I want to do is I want to parent everything but the lights to a null object. So layer, new, null object, and everything but the lights will be parented to the null object. And now I can rotate this however I want, right? I'm actually really, really digging that. And I still think that the light is a little bit too bright. I'm gonna make it a little bit less. So I'm changing the intensity of the light. I'm gonna have a solid, and I'm gonna make this solid 3D. And you know what, I can even, I'm gonna have it kind of bluish, why not? And I'm just gonna send it to the back. And I'll change the scale of the solid. And I'll see how much of this, oh yes, you can absolutely see the reflections happening and all of that. If we change this to full, oh, that's really good. So with an old object now, I can just keep on rotating this however I want. And I am gonna zoom out now. And there you have it. This is actually pretty good. Maybe even make this solid a little bit darker. All right? Just a little bit. That's really good. And, you know, I'm just doing these kind of sort of now. I'm not necessarily, you know, changing too many things or whatever. But, you know, if you want to change like the door more and the combination handle, you can actually select both of those. And you can bring him forward more, like if you want to bring him uh, forward like yay. And you can also extrude them more so that when you zoom in, let me go ahead and I'm going to extrude the door more so that it basically, I don't see anything. There you go. And I'm going to move the combination handle forward a little bit more. That way, you know, it'll catch more of the light differences and all of that good stuff. So with an all objects, I'll place, I press R for rotation and P for position. And I may think I want to make it start so that I can see it a little bit better. And it's taking a little bit to uh, to render. Well, that's because I have it at full. Let me have it at auto. And that's actually pretty cool. I am just going to keyframe everything here. And I'm going to go to about six seconds. And now I'm going to reset all of these. That's just a quick way for me to just come close enough. And now in the middle here, I'll just change some of the rotations. I can make it go yay, maybe a little bit higher here. And maybe yay. And that's actually not too bad. And it can just go like yay. And you can change this however you want. You can see the reflections there and everything. That's not too, too bad. And now it's just going to reset. And there you have it. That's not too, too bad. Okay. So while all of this is happening, I want for the combination handle outlines to be doing their thing. So R for rotation. And this time I'm just going to keyframe the Z rotation. So I'm going to go like, yay and like yay and and i'm just doing it randomly like yay and yay 
and maybe just a little bit here. I'm going to uh, give him an easy ease. So keyframe assistant, easy ease. And now I'm just going to make them all go a little bit faster. I'm pressing and holding the Alt key on Windows, Option key on the Mac. And now as this goes, the combination handle is going to be rotating and doing its thing. Once it stops, now the door can open, right? So I'm actually going to reset this so it goes back to the beginning. I'm going to move this one closer to yay. And at this point, I want for the door to open. So I'm going to change the anchor point of the door to be here. Uh, but I'm going to parent the combination handle outlines to the door so that they both go together. The problem is that they are already parented to the null object. So what to do, what to do? And the answer is simply split the layer. If I split the layer, one layer is the continuation of the other. And now I can simply parent this to this and not have this one be parented by anyone. So all I'm doing is splitting the layers because you can't really keyframe parenting, right? And now when the door opens, which is going to open now, and it's going to be the Y rotation, boom, is going to show me what's inside of the vault. So this is what I have so far. And I think the door is a little bit too extruded. So I'm just going to go and I don't need to uh, do both of them. This one alone is all I need. Let's see how that's going to look. I love it. Perfect. And now in here is going to show the video underneath. So I'm going to put the video here in the timeline. I'll make it 3D as well. And I'm just going to have it start well, maybe even here. All right. So something like that. And at this point in time, I'm going to mask the video so that it shows only inside of the vault. All right, so notice that the video is a little bit too bright. That's because I made it 3D. Maybe I didn't have to make it 3D. Let's, uh, yeah, the problem is that if I don't, if, if I don't make it 3D, then I won't be able to see it. Uh, I guess I could put it on top, but that's harder. So I'm just going to tell it to ignore the lights because it's a little bit too bright. So I'm going to go to my material options and where it says accepts lights, I'm going to say no, don't accept lights. And there you have it. At this point, everything can become bigger and I can simply show more of the video like how I did it before. So I'm just going to, let's see. Yeah, I think I can parent the null to, uh, to everything. And now, there you go, S for scale, or P for position, rather. So let's see, this opens up. And right here, this can start becoming closer and closer to the camera until it disappears. All right, so let me just go ahead and do that until it's actually gone. That's about right. And this is good. And now as it becomes larger, 
is going to show more and more and more of the video. And this is taking a little too long. I'm just going to make it faster. So at this point in time, the mask of the video should be as big as the viewable area. So I'll select the mask and here we go. I'm just going to do yay. And that's actually pretty good. And this is the animation as we have it right now. So a couple of things. I think the, the vault body is a little bit too thick. So I'm going to go to the extrusion depth and make it a little bit less. Let's see how that affects the animation and it shouldn't. Let's make it less. Well, I can always change the mask. Let's see. That's not too bad. That's actually better. And now, yeah, this is still working great, except here the mask is not quite covering it. So that's fine. Uh, we can actually just go to where it stops working, which is somewhere around here. Select the mask and have it do its thing. Keep on going. Controller command key. There you go. And that works perfectly well. All righty. So this is now what we have on the animation. A much thinner vault. Yeah, right here is a little bit too large. So let's fix it. That's pretty good. Perfect. About the only things that I'm going to change thing uh, in here are uh, the reflection, the intensity is too much, the sharpness is too much, and uh, let's see, that's a little too, 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 all righty, and I'm also going to change the color of the solid because it's a little much. That's a little bit darker. I also want to change the color of the vault itself to be a little bit darker. I think the wheel is a little too much. So I'm going to go to the combination handle outlines and I'm going to change both of them at the same time. So under geometry options, I think they're too extruded. And under position, so P for position, they could be a little bit more, yay. That's much better.
I think the extrusion of the door is also a little too much still. That's much, much better. And this is the final. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.